Most PDP leaders knew their party had been decimated by Mr. Obi. The Southeast and the South South that were traditional strongholds of PDP constituted the core support base for the Labour Party. PDP went into this election without its limbs and lied to itself that it could win the race. It is worthy of note that Atiku also accepted this fact during his press conference yesterday when he lamented that his party's votes in the Southeast and South-South regions were carted away by the Labour Party. In another breath, the same Atiku at his press conference yesterday stated emphatically that Peter Obi had no pathway to victory. He said so. Go and rewatch that press conference. He said the Labour Party had no pathway to victory. So, if he's claiming victory, Obi is claiming victory. We, who is now claiming victory? <laughs> now, two of them are claiming victory. We own the victory. That's right. So we appeal to them or advise them that they should go and sort themselves out and decide between the two of them who actually lays claim to victory that is already in our possession. <laughs> the PDP also found itself in number three in Kano, with a former member, Kwan Kaso, running away with over 900,000 votes. So the PDP was terribly depleted before the election. How far could the PDP have gone with what was left of it? Not so far as the results of the elections have shown. In fact, the members of the G5, you, you are aware of the famous uh, G5 the five governors. They were key leaders of the party, of the PDP, with substantial political influence. They also went away with their own pound of flesh, leaving a very crippled PDP to scavenge for crumbs of votes. For Peter Obi, he will go down as Nigeria's most dangerous and divisive politician. Yes. He elevated his well-known clannish mentality to a most unfortunate height by openly anchoring his campaign on religion and ethnicity. He presented himself, Obi presented himself as a poster boy for and a champion of our country's fault lines. He took advantage of our youths whose expectations are fast-paced who are uninterested in excuses and who are in search of a hero. He pumped up their sentiments and rode on their emotions while grandstanding as a savior. It was a false pretense. Obi's credentials are eternally stained as a former governor with no remarkable legacy. Not a few of our youths thought Peter Obi looked like the leader they wanted and many of them could not tolerate any form of scrutiny of their newfound <coughs> hero. The combination of the disgruntled youths, the ethnic champions, and commercial or commercial clerics, or what we call pastorpreneurs, these were the reasons Obi thought he could win a presidential election in Nigeria. Such illogic is not strange to the Labour Party. If Labour Party could not fill up its own quota for polling booth agents with a shortfall of over 40,000 agents, how did it intend to compete with political parties like the APC and the PDP? It will be interesting to see what evidence of rigging the Labour Party will present before the court when the party could not appoint agents to monitor nearly a quarter of the venues of polling as we look forward to an encounter with both PDP and LP at the court, we want to enjoin the two of them to pursue their grievances with decorum. They should encourage their members, supporters, and ethnic and religious consultants to follow the path of the rule of law. We note that both Atiku and Obi are claiming victory. 
Wouldn't it then be, make a lot of sense for them to agree who the actual winner is before challenging the APC in court? Meanwhile, the APC train has left the station.